Hello and welcome. Thanks for visiting Danger Aware's Animation Department. I'm doing extreme rigging. And this is our character, Talar. He's a four-year-old boy that has a twin sister named Solari. And I've been working on the puppet. Now I understand I'm not an expert in animation. In fact, I've only been learning how to do moho for the last two years. So I've learned what I've learned in the last two years. Is it perfect? Not at all. Is it close to perfect? Nowhere near. Am I learning new things about how to use moho to make better and better characters and scenes? Absolutely. So here I want to show you what I've been able to do. So this is the new Talar. And as you can see, he's quite animatable and I can change what's printed on his shirt. Have him in a shirt and tie, short sleeve, long sleeve, different kinds of ties, short pants, long pants, um, the shirt with a gap in the opening for a t-shirt underneath or just a full shirt, um, all kinds of various options that I can do with this one puppet. And my philosophy is the better we make the puppet, the easier it is to do the animation. So let's go ahead and stop this animation here and get on into Moho. So here is the Talar character and this is the animation you just saw. So if I was to play it out, it's just the exact same thing you just saw, but you can see all the bones moving. And so I'm going to go through and show what each of these bones is and how to use it to manipulate this character. And some of the things I've learned in creating uh, this character, indeed, a uh, lot of changes that I've learned by creating this character that I was not doing before. So let's start at the bottom here. So here we have the feet. So let's go ahead and I'm going to turn on the labels on some of these. So let's go bone and shift and we're just going to select the ones that are not going to overlap others at the moment. So we'll just pick some of these. And let's turn on the labels for those bones and we'll go over them first. So here we have the right foot cover and the left foot cover. So if we manipulate this character in our animation line, you can see that we can change the foot from a shoe with a sock to a shoe without a sock. He is only four years old. Then to just a sock, to a sandal, and finally to the barefoot. And then each of these can be manipulated, turning full left or full right. And so we can put the sock on and we can still rotate the foot. So both feet rotate and both feet can have different coverings. And we can certainly add more, but for now this will work because all we need to do is change the shoes, let's change the color, the socks, the same thing. We can change the colors to any sets of colors we want. So then we've got here lower clothing. So with this bone, I created a bunch of different clothing layouts. As you can see here from the chest, we've got the dress shirt, then the long shirt, then a sweatshirt, a V collar shirt, a short shirt, and an undershirt, and then of course bear. So if we manipulate the bone for lower clothing, and there's bare, where there's nothing there, then short underwear, or swim trunks, then short pants, then long baggy pants, or sweatpants, then long straight pants, and then we can move up here to upper clothing, and we can go from a well let's get rid of the sleeves here i think this one's the sleeves there we go so we can go with bare uh, a undershirt a t-shirt a more professional shirt a longer shirt a dress shirt so if you 
close in you can see he's wearing a tie and he's got buttons down and so once we get into the shirts like this and to the ties specifically we can change the ties yeah I set all these up and I still don't remember them all and as you can see I haven't corrected the collar here yet so the character is not quite correct all the way through We've got a few things to fine tune on it still but as you can see there's a lot we can do with uh, changing the clothing and then changing the sleeves we've got tons of different shirts that we can put the character in and the pants are the same way we can go from short pants to long pants so that's all that then we've got the frown smile of the face so that's what this one does. So we can make the character frown or smile. We can also move the character's tongue up and down. If you look inside the mouth there, the tongue moving up and down. Let's zoom in a bit there. So there's the tongue moving up and down. So we can go from underneath for la or th or ha. You know, so the tongue does play a, a big part in people being able to uh, read lips so that's what we're working towards is to we know we can't simulate true reading lips but we're going to try as best we can and to do American hand sign language so that these characters will do some form of sign language so then we've got the pupil size so we can change how big the pupils are inside the head there so if I zoom in you can see up close there is the pupil size is changing and then of course we have the head left and right so we can turn the head left and right again not yet perfect but we're getting there so I just wanted to show off all the different features of this character so let's go ahead and choose all these bones and turn off the labels so show label no. As you saw, we have these other bones that I didn't show their labels, but we can see each one of them here. So this one is the stoop down and uh, pull up on the legs. So when the character sits down, we'll be able to bring the legs up as if they were sitting, you know. So uh, down brings it way down, so it makes the leg basically longer. Then this one is to twist the hips left and right. And as you can tell, or I hope you can tell, the pants are overlapping first one way and then the other. So we're getting both directions. So we can make the character uh, walking this direction or flip this, whoops, wrong, wrong tool, flip this around and make him walking the other direction just like that and we simply rotate the shoe wrong foot that foot and there we go so now you can see that the character can travel in both directions and overlap the legs whichever way we need to so we can easily switch this around to where the other leg is out in front but then it turns the, that direction, so we should be facing the other way now. So that gives us that ability. Then this one allows us to change the shirt to the various shirts. So uh, again, if we turn off the sleeves, then you can see each of the shirts. But with each shirt, we can apply different level sleeves, thus making very many different shirts and all we got to do is change the colors to have a different color shirt then we can have imprints on our shirt that imprint there is symbol in and we can change it to one of our black ants then our uh, rojo b the no print on the shirt then the print of the bagillager's tree then the bagillager's rocket inside and out and then finally a respect my personal space danger aware t-shirt and with this no matter what color we change the shirt we can change the print 
for the Respect My Personal Space. So we can choose the best print for the color of shirt that we currently have. And just simply going into styles and pulling up shirt will allow us to change the color, but we should do so in the construction layer unless you're truly wanting to change it only during the animation. So again, we go to shirt right here and say we want him to have a white shirt. So we can quickly change it to a white shirt and there we go. And now we can go back in and change the emblem to respect my personal space. And of course, with white, any color we select here is going to work. There's the Respect My Personal Space t-shirt for uh, Talar. And this is the pockets, if you can see there. So if we want a dress shirt with pockets, let's, let's get rid of the emblems. And we'll go to shirts with pockets. So we can have a single pocket on the left, single pocket on the right, no pocket, both pockets, both pockets with buttons. There's the various pockets you can have on our shirts. So with this, we can easily create hundreds of different kinds of shirts. And then the next set of controls here is for the character's mouth. The mouth is only made up, the lips are only made up of four points. One on each edge, one at the base, and one in the center. Let me go ahead and bring up the mouth here. mouth. You can see this is quite a complex character, but where I can, I try to keep it as simple as possible. So as you can see, the lips here are simply four points. This point, I use curve to provide the bulging of the upper lips, and then on the bottom one, I simply widen it a bit and make it thicker, and that gives me my basic lip layout. And that allows me to easily manipulate how the mouth would work. So if I go to Talar here and I start manipulating the mouth, I can make the character smile bigger or frown just by moving the outer two points. I'm not moving the center ones. We're only moving the outer two. And so then we can open and close the jaw, which brings the bottom teeth down with the jaw just like a real person. The top teeth stay in alignment with the skull or the nose. Then we can open and close the lips to make the character speak or whatever we want to do. Whistle if we want like, you know, we can, we can do quite a bit. And then finally we can widen or narrow the lips. So there we've got the whistling Of course, a four-year-old, I don't know very many four-year-olds that can whistle. So I'm not sure that Talar here will be able to, move, to whistle. But let's go ahead and open the mouth up all the way. Uh, there we go. So you can see inside. And let's go ahead and straighten the head out so it's straight on. So now you can see inside the mouth there, you can see the tongue. And so with these other four controls, we control the tongue. We need to be in the animation layer. so. We can make it go up and down, and there you can see the whole thing. We can make it move left and right, just like that. We can change its shape as far as whether it's pointed or narrow, and we can widen or narrow the tongue itself. So we can make the points sharp or rounded. It's hard to see at this, this degree, but that's what this lever here is doing. And then finally, over here we have the mouth phonetic control. And a lot of animators like to create a phonetic chart so that they can easily make the character laugh or speak or, or you know, say words. So let's reset all of these mouth controls so that we're at our root base mouth here. And again, this is just only four um, points on the lips to create this mouth.
Danger Aware has a new and important mission to change the paradigm of abuse awareness through play and entertainment. We need help to accomplish our goals. We need stories that will entertain and will teach personal rights and how to call out abuse in the earliest stages. We need music, jokes, poems, and ideas of things that we can use to help educate the young and vulnerable. We need stories of triumph over abuse to inspire others in the correct ways to call out the precursors to abuse. If we expose the grooming, we can prevent the abuse. You can also help us through donations on our website, dangeraware.org. You can also help us through donations on our website, dangeraware.org. Or you can help or you can help finance our expansion into Colorado by visiting Colorado Gives 365.org backslash danger aware. Or you can help finance our expansion into Colorado by visiting coloradogives.org backslash story backslash danger aware. Or you can use PayPal me dot or you can use PayPal dot me backslash danger aware or you can visit our website and scroll down and use the PayPal donate now button. We also offer Danger Aware merchandise. Just visit DangerAware.org. Just visit DangerAware.org and click on the Respect My Personal Space notebook. That will allow you to then launch our Teespring store where you can buy many Respect My Personal Space objects and apparel. So if we explore, you can also get uh, pillows with Solari and Talar on them, face masks, notebooks, sweatshirts, aprons, t-shirts for kids, stainless steel water bottles, Super Aware With You Solari and Talar t-shirt, classic crew necks, coffee cups, a digital coloring book of the Bagillagers, and Respect My Personal Space Apparel. So if you'd like to help us out, please either donate or purchase our merchandise at DangerWear.org. So if you want to change the paradigm of abuse awareness, visit DangerAware.org. So if you want to change the paradigm of abuse awareness, visit DangerAware.org. Play our games, enter our contests, read our comics, buy our merchandise, or simply donate. Thank you for listening. You have a wonderful day and thanks again. So, but the teeth and the tongue inside and the gums, all that's added extra. So when an animator wants to make a character speak, they'd like to use a phonetic chart to easily select that. So I've added that here. You can simply turn the chart on when you need it and then turn it off when you don't. 
I recommend you turn it on at the beginning so it's easy to come back and simply remove it. It'll stay on as long as we leave it on from here forward. But when we're ready to compile our animation, we simply come back here to the first frame of the timeline and remove the chart so we don't see it. But with the chart up, we can e easily choose any mouth shape. And as you can see, these bones are moving to create these various shapes. So we could create each of these shapes just using these bones and the tongue control, which is exactly what I've done. And we can choose each of these phonetic shapes to create speech for the character. I would like to make this more expanded to cover a full 40 English phonemes, but for now this will do. So there we go. Now we can make our character speak. And then finally up here we have the eyes. So again, I showed that we can change the pupil size. And you can see that the right eye is paired to the left eye. So right now everything I do to the left eye happens to the right eye. But if I should say want to wink instead of blink, I can disassociate this under bone constraints. So you can see here the angle control for the uh, right lid up and down is controlled by the left lid up and down. So whatever I do with this bone, this bone is going to duplicate it on a one for one basis. So now I can move the eyelids up and down for both eyes at the same time. So the character can be wide awake, sleeping, drowsy, anything we want. We've got a lot of features here that we can use. And then we've got pupils up and down, of course, so that you can look up and down and left and right so that the character can look around in all directions. So we can control the eyes specifically in the head get it exactly where we want it to be looking. So if you want to be looking at the audience, you look like that. You want to be looking over at somebody to your side, suspiciously like that. You want to add more suspicion, bring the eyes down and bring down the eyebrows so that we're getting like a pretty much of a scowl. Now you can see these lines in the face and the cheeks and the forehead, but when we render all of those will fade into the proper uh, levels so that the character's face has a uh, 3D-ish look. But there we go, we've got Talar looking kind of suspiciously off to his left. And so we can easily manipulate our character and pose it to do anything we want. All of the regular bone posing is here as well. So we can set the arm like this and we can rotate around the body. So now that arm is out in front. Now it's behind the shoulder. So we can go back and forth with our character's uh, shoulders and hips to choose, you know, whether they're pointing left or pointing right uh, with their body and hips. And we can do the same thing with the head. The head also moves to the left, to the right, and up and down. And again, no, it's not perfect, and I'm still working on this. And I'm not an artist, so please be kind to me. I'm just doing the best I can. We would love, if you're an animator, we'd love for you to produce us an animation if it has anything to do with abuse awareness, calling out abuse, calling out the precursors of abuse, recognizing abuse happening to others, and trying to do what you can to fix it. You know, tell others, that's your best bet. Anytime there's something wrong being done, the more people you tell about it, the more likely it is to be stopped. So keep that in mind when you're thinking whether you should or should not talk about uh, abuse with somebody. Uh, they might need you just to encourage them a little bit to make them stand up for themselves. So. If you would like to build us an animation and submit it to us, we'll post it on our website. If it has something to do with abuse awareness or learning how to protect yourself or just watching out for dangers in the real world, like stepping out between cars, stuff like that.
Uh, oh, another thing is, uh, Talar's hands are very complex. In fact, there's probably almost as many bones in his two hands as the rest of his body other than the feet. I did put some extra toes uh, controls in the feet, but there's still many more bones in the hands. So with that, it allows me to uh, rotate the hand towards us or away from us. So we can do both sides of the hand. We can bend the thumb, bend the tip of the thumb, bend each finger, and produce any kind of hand look that we're looking for. If we want to fold the uh, hands down into the palm of the hand, we can do that too. Let's straighten these fingers first though. And then we can bend them into the palm of the hand like this. So we just need to come in close to the hand to be able to uh, easily manipulate exactly what we want it to look like but it's easy to produce any look for the hand that we want. Um, I guess if I could grab the right bone there. So here we've got the uh, middle finger and we can move that side to side with the bone that's in the palm of the hand. That's the same is true for the forefinger here. So we can shrink that up. We can bring the thumb over our fingers just like that. We can manipulate the hand into any pose for American Sign Language. So that's what we're going to try to do. I hope it'll work out. So we're going to try to uh, do that. And then uh, we can also do high. Uh, love you. So that's the uh, American Sign Language image for basically like that actually it's the uh, eye for the, the little finger is the eye and the forefinger and the thumb make a letter L so it's for I love you so we can with uh, a little bit of training and work probably put together some American Sign Language as well as manipulating the face to produce semblances of emotional display. So stick around. I'll be showing you uh, Talar's sister next. Her name is Solari and she looks a lot like Talar but she'll wear a dress and other clothing that's girlish. Um, but she'll also have the same clothes that he has here. So I'm just going to simply bring these clothes on over to the Solari character and then add a dress or two or uh, skirts and that can go with the shirts and we can do everything we want. Producing any kind of character scenario, putting him in a shirt and tie or in just a summer t-shirt to be out running around. So again, it's not yet perfect, but a lot of this can be taken care of during animation and so we can again both hands are fully manipulatable and can be rotated and displayed to produce just about any possible hand gesture that we would like to do so you have a great day visit dangeraware.org and help us change the paradigm of abuse awareness if you're an animator and you'd like to produce us an animation that we can put on our website, please do so. We are open to anyone helping us change the paradigm of abuse awareness. So you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching and come again.